Um, such moving talks, and it's difficult to um, you know, fo follow from them. And it reminded me very much of our visit to Omar with the Peace Council just after the bombing. And um, I think all we from outside could do was just be silent. And that's very often. I think all we can do is to be alongside people in, in their suffering. And certainly the theme of forgiveness has been one which um, UPF, we've had a, a whole series of meetings about. Um, but I thought, um, thinking we were going to be at Parliament, and I think I was asked particularly to talk from a, a Christian standpoint, um, many of you all know that the how proceedings in the Houses of Parliament usually begin with a Christian prayer. Often it's the Lord's Prayer, that's the apostrophe is after the D and not the Lord's Prayer after the Lord, House of Lord's Prayer. So it's that prayer. And I thought I might just sort of reflect on that, on Jesus, well, that teaching, which really seems to be a manifesto, if I can call it, for reconciliation and peace building. And the opening words, Our Father, affirm, as we've heard again, this there's one family under God, because a God who we think is just restricted to our religion is a God to, who is too small. As a hymn puts it, he enfoldeth all the world in one embrace, with unfolding grasp is holding every child of every race. And it is tragic that religions get hijacked to justify violence, and to cause so much division. And I think it is always when one speaks that those who are people of faith has to be, really begin with mea culpa, mea culpa. Um, and then we go on, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And I think that's very important at the moment. It's an expression of hope that things can change. There's so much of talk about doomsday predictions. And yes, but we have to also believe that change is possible. Um, there's a lovely um, little poem of an eight-year-old Japanese child. When tomorrow I open my eyes, I should like to hear the news that all the children in the world are longing for, that peace the Redeemer has come. We owe that to our children. God's kingdom is a kingdom of justice and peace. And again, a quote from the Old Testament, Hebrew Bible, to loose the chains of injustice and to set the oppressed go free. And it's agonizingly difficult, I think, isn't it, to know when military or police action is indeed serving the cause of justice and truth, or whether it's serving some economic advantage of a nation. And at this uh, period of remembrance, I can't help looking back years ago to my national service in, during the Troubles in Cyprus. It was actually sort of um, part of time of the armed conflict. And I felt that we were trying to stop um, the conflict between the Greek and the Turkish Cypriots. And indeed, when the British left, there was a bitter civil war. And we were always armed and going down, I was working port security, and going down from the camp, um, we always had to have a pistol. And I never had to use it. Um, if any of you have been in some military training, I found practicing with bayonets on Haysacks was more than enough. Um, but I wonder, yeah, could I have killed somebody if I'd felt somebody was about to shoot and it was very difficult to throw a bomb? And it made me realize, thinking about this, that first of all, to do that, we actually have to dehumanize the enemy, that language where you know, they're terrorists, they're what? Um, the vet Nazis open spoke of Jews and homosexuals as vermin or rats, which needed to be eliminated. And this is why, I'm going to take up this word polarization, 
I think our use of language is so important and any dehumanizing of other people <coughs> begins to lead to violence and problems. And I hope that people engaging in the election campaign, perhaps I should say all who go to watch football matches, um, recognise this for saying, isn't there, they begin by burning books, they end by burning people. And so, and that's just that phrase, quite often you hear people call somebody, oh, you're a waste of space. Just think about it. It's a horrific term, isn't it? And so easily we allow our language to demonize others. And then give us this day our daily bread. And of course, it is our, not my. And by that, we mean all the people in the world, the millions who are hungry and homeless. God calls us to share our food with the hungry, to provide the migrant with shelter. And when you see people who are naked, to give them clothes. And I have to say, it's um, quite costly for me with a dog collar um, to come to London because there's so many people aren't there sitting there with their bowls, I'm hungry, and so on. And I try to stop. And I think very often it's not the money, it's speaking to people, acknowledging. Um, my wife recently in Torquay, she stopped suddenly, and then she realised she hadn't got any money with, with her and apologised. It doesn't matter. You're the first person who's spoken to me today. So much that we can do. And then forgive us when we do wrong and teach us to forgive others who hurt us. And you have been so moving and said so much that I would have wanted to say. And I think so there's no need to appoint it. But I think of those words of Martin Luther King, love is the only force capable of changing an enemy into a friend. And he went on, but forgiveness does not change the past. Forgiveness changes the future. It opens up new possibilities. And we will tell you, but I was, remember going to the church in District 6 in Cape Town. Some of you may know that was an area which was a multiracial area. And then the people who were not white, but sort of moved out of it, dumped some 20 miles away. But there was a church there, and I was asked to preach once there, and some of those the people, who they moved so far, they would come back to their church. And I asked them how they felt about the past, and just the simple reply, we must forgive, as Jesus has taught us. If we have been forgiven, then we must forgive. And then, may we not be led into temptation. And I think the greater the influence we have or wealth, the greater our temptation is to abuse our power. And I remember Lord Wetherill, who some of you all know, was a speaker of the House of Commons. When I went to the memorial event for him, speaker after speaker, recalled his words, what is morally wrong is never politically right. And I wish that could be as a motto on all our political manifestos. We may disagree, but we need to speak for truth. And sadly, it's not just a message to politicians because so often, at all of the press, it's a message also to our church leaders. And George Eliot once said, our words have wings, but fly not where we would. Because what we say can never be unsaid. What we do can never be undone. We can ask forgiveness, but those words have been said. And just finally, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. And I suppose seeing on television the horrific um, suffering of children, we've been seeing some haven't we, from the Middle East and others. One asked, where was God? And I felt this very acutely, this question, when at one of the UPF um, meetings, we went to a concentration camp. And um, Mauthausen 
where a lot of American prisoners had been held at a con well, prisoner of war camp and a concentration camp. And there were also, uh, particularly those who'd been uh, uh, spies or so on, British spies, or they, they were um, resistance movement, had been killed. And Mary was asked to lay a wreath on the British England memorial to the British. And I was asked to say a prayer. And I suppose the question is, what can you pray to God in the concentration camp? And I was helped by remembering that Rabbi um, Hugo Grin, you remember some of you, he was a, a very often a moral maze, and he spent his adult, a a teenage years at a camp. And he always said, the question was not, where was God? But where was humanity? And in my understanding, God does not override our human freedom. He asks us to share with him in the healing of the nations. But, but in a sense, the future is open and we are called to share in that work of love and reconciliation and healing. And the Dalai Lama, who has known so much suffering, often tells us, do not give up, do not give up. God never gives up on us. And so, by what we say and by how we live, we can either increase polarization or decrease it. Each of us can make a difference. Dear God, change the world and begin with me. Thank you.